Okay, so in this video, we will make a simple but important remark about the square root of x. So first, let us catch the graph of y equals x squared. This is, of course, a simple parabola that passes through the origin. And the root of x being the inverse of x squared, to obtain its graph, we look at the line y equals x. And if we reflect the graph of y equals x squared about the line y equals x, we will obtain the graph of square root of x. And reflecting x squared about y equals x will return the parabola, but now sideways. So the one key observation here is that the root of x is not a function. For any given positive x value, there are two distinct possible solutions. One negative, one positive y value and one negative y value. So say we pick x equals 9, then the root of 9 algebraically could be 3, as of course 3 squared is 9, but the root of 9 could also be negative 3, as of course the square of negative 3 is also positive 9. So algebraically for any positive x value, there are two distinct square root values. There is the positive solution and the negative solution. But when dealing with the square root numerically, in the case, say, of limits, we want root of x to be a function. To this end, we have to make a choice. Do we pick the positive set of solutions, the positive branch of the square root, or do we pick the negative set of solutions, the negative branch of the square root? The simpler choice, of course, is the positive branch of the square root. So in viewing root of x as a function, we make an arbitrary choice to only consider the positive solutions, the positive branch of the square root. So suppose we now look at the square root of negative 3 squared. And now again, we look at the square root not algebraically, but numerically. Therefore, the root of a positive number is always positive, and it's only 0 at zero. So it's tempting here to say, well, the root is the inverse of the square, and so this should cancel, and we should be left with negative 3. But again here we are looking at the square root, not algebraically, but numerically. So what if we square negative 3? Then we get positive 9. And since we chose the positive branch of the square root as our function, then the root of 9 is positive 3. So by squaring negative 3, then taking the positive branch of the square root, we don't get back the initial number, but the initial number without the negative sign, therefore the initial number in absolute value. If you prefer, we get the negative of the initial number, since the number we initially squared was negative. And this is true in general. If you take the square root of x squared, since the square, if x is negative, cancels the negative, and we pick the positive branch of the square root to be our function, this always is positive, or worst case, 0 when x is 0. So this simplifies not to x, but to the absolute value of x, which of course is a piecewise function, which is simply x. If the number x is already non-negative, and to make x positive if it's negative, we simply negate it. And this is not unique to the square root function. This is true of any even root of any even power. If you take an even power of a negative, it becomes positive. And by the same argument, even roots of positive numbers are also positive since we always pick positive branch of the even roots to have functions. So in general, the square root of x squared 
is the absolute value of x. The fourth root of x4 is also the absolute value of x. The sixth root of x6 is also the absolute value of x. And so on for any even root of the corresponding even power. Now, do we have to worry about the absolute value if we have an odd root of the corresponding odd power? And the answer is no. If you have an odd power of a positive, it remains positive, and an odd power of a negative is also negative. And the same is true of odd roots. So in general, dealing with odd roots of, even, of odd powers is simpler. The cube root of x cubed is always x. The fifth root of x5 is always x. The seventh root of x7 is always x. And so on for any odd root of the corresponding odd power of x. So you only have to be careful when dealing with even roots numerically, since we always pick the positive branch of the square root, fourth root, sixth root, and so on, and taking a positive, um, an even power of a negative becomes positive, then in each case, an even root of the corresponding even power of x returns x in absolute value. And that's it.